us all here. So today, I can't even zoom out any further. Holy crap. Um, today we've got a lot to go over. So first and foremost, um, I just want to give a thank you out to everybody that was reaching out to me, making sure that me and my family were okay. Uh, we are definitely doing a heck of a lot better. Um, yes, feeling much better. And um, I'm glad for that. Um, it's a little bit odd there for a while, we'll say, in a nice way. Beyond uh, my family's illness and everything, there has now been a lot going on in World of Warplanes that I've been missing out on, but <clears throat> looks like um, you know everything's trending in the right direction just in time for me to be able to um, take advantage of some missions. So let's take a quick look here. A lot has happened in uh, in just you know recently, right? So a new update came out, 2.1.7. Uh, came out with a new mission for the B-29C Tier 8 um, American Bomber Premium. <laughs> um, huge missions, but there's some other stuff going on as well. And so let's take a quick, quick look at those other things. And then we're going to look at the missions for the B-29C. And then we're going to look at the missions for the B-29C. Um, first and foremost, so you've got your usual July deals, your usual just monthly deals supply bundles they've got the steel bundles in here as well and then you know more supplies and more steel and more supplies and more steel the perk to the steel bundles is typically you've got a better chance at premiums uh you know overall they've got quote unquote better stuff um i'm gonna say hold off on any july deals and um because you're gonna be able to get a lot of crates through the mission marathon and I'm going to tell you right now, you should do the Mission Marathon whether you plan on or even really trying to get the B-29C. Because, and we'll go over it in more detail in just a second. But there's a lot of stuff you can just get just for... A lot of the missions are just, you know, like get 60,000 personal points in any number of battles. Well, you're eventually going to do that, so you might as well start the missions so you can start getting that stuff. Um, whether or not you actually get the, the end prize is inconsequential. Uh, but a lot of the prizes are um, crates. On top of that, there's an actual Independence Day um, mission going on here as well. So we'll take a quick look. So next up, combat use. What is combat use? Well, there um, from when is the dates on this? From the f for the whole month of July, you can earn these um, planes earn with money. Um, <laughs> you've got the B um, five three nine, which is a tier three European plane. Um, you've got the Model 81A, Tier 4 American Fighter. You've got the North American Mustang Mark 1, which is a Tier 6 British Fighter. Um, you've got the 302, which is Tier 7 Soviet Fighter. And the F-82E Twin Mustang, which is a Tier 8 American um, Heavy Fighter. All of these have battle missions. You purchase the battle mission. They require you to get a certain amount of uh, personal points over the next year. So anywhere from 50,000 to 300,000 personal points. If it takes you a year, um, as long as it doesn't take you past April, you'll, uh, excuse me, August of next year, 2022, you'll earn these. Are these planes really worth it? Well, I have, I have these planes actually. Uh, was able to win the B3534, excuse me. Um, it's a fine plane. I mean, it's tier three. It's European. That's its uh, cool thing. So any European premium plane, you can um, reset to be any other nation. I think it's 200,000 credits, I believe. And then you can use it to, um, you know, earn experience on whatever nation's pilots. I think mine is still just European, but you could make this German and, and boost up your 1101 pilot or make it American and boost up your Saber pilot, whatever. Um, it's not a great plane. It's not a bad plane. It's just, it's a fighter. It's a tier three fighter. It'll do you fine. Yep. I like the way it looks. Beyond that, man. Uh, next up there is the Model 81A1. Uh, it's kind of a rare plane, uh, is my understanding. Um, it's not overly good either. It's got a good airframe. I can say that. It's got pretty good airspeed for tier four, pretty good maneuverability, pretty good altitude performance. It's really kind of like a tier four version of a P-39, other than its guns completely suck. It has two machine guns, and that's it. I use this plane 
uh, when I'm trying to get assists. Um, it's a great at getting assists because it's not very good at getting those kills. But it is tier four, um, you know, so you can get a lot of your dailies when it comes to the the lower chevron um, missions for some of those. And it's a unique plane. I enjoy it, but it's not. Um, it's a struggle sometimes to do incredibly well in. Next up is a hurricane. Hurricane, excuse me, a Mustang Mark One. I, I don't have the Mark One. I, I have the Mark One A. Uh, the difference between this and the just normal Mark One is the machine guns. This plane has four 20 millimeter cannons. The of plane that's available for purchase has just machine guns. I think this plane's this plane's kind of the opposite of a lot of American fighters. The um, the airframe itself kind of sucks. The airspeed's a little slower than you'd want it to be. The maneuverability is certainly worse than you'd want it to be, and the altitude performance is worse than you'd want it to be. Um, what makes this plane that we're looking at right now good is its cannons. Cannons make up for all that crap. Um, putting machine guns on this plane, I probably wouldn't like it very well. So I haven't flown the Mustang uh, one, but I don't think I'd really want to, to be honest. Next up is the 302. This plane I actually do very much enjoy. Um, it is a speed demon. Don't be, you know, don't don't look at this and say, "Wow, this uh, plane speed isn't actually all that good, is it?" I mean, it's okay, but it's not swell. This 545 mile an hour boost speed—that's where you're basically gonna live pretty much on this plane. I've got mine specialized and then uh, ultimate equipment on it, so it stays up there even better. It's cruise speed of 202, yeah, it'll stay there if you keep off the boost. But this plane's boost is so incredibly good. I've also got mine built to recoup that boost very quickly. I'm, I'm up consistently above 450 miles an hour. Um, you can feel free to do the multiplication to figure out what that means in uh, KMH. Uh, the guns are... Eh, there's four 20mm cannons. Luckily, they're centrally located. They're kind of mediocre, but... Utilizing your speed, you can do a lot of uh, boom and zoom, um, and you know, that's really your bread and butter. The plane isn't very strong, it doesn't take hits very well, but if you're utilizing your speed, you're avoiding getting hit. If you get your engines knocked out, you're toast, T-O-A-S-T, -T, toast, because um, you've got nothing. Your maneuverability absolutely sucks. The altitude performance is mediocre, but just with your amount of boost, you can get up higher than you normally would, and that's about it. It's a fun plane. Um, yeah, this would be one I'd be pretty excited about to get if I didn't already have it. And last but not least on this list um, is a plane I don't have, but I've got the P-82B. So there's the F-82E, which is for sale um, with these missions. The difference between the P-82B and the F-82E, it seems subtle, but it, there are some pretty big differences. So you have half the rockets. There's only five rockets, not these 10. And the five rockets are centrally located. So instead of having 14 machine guns like you've got on the P-82B, you have either six or eight. Don't quote me on either one of those. Um, and you have your five centrally located rockets. The F-82E is more air-to-air -air combat focused, where the P-82B is more air-to-ground focused. You have more rockets. Um, you have less speed, less maneuverability, I think. Um, and so that's on the P-82. The F-82 is, is going to be faster and higher altitude performance. And it's just better at air-to-air -air engagement. Not that this plane's bad at air-to-air -air engagement. The F-82 is just going to be more, more suited to that. This plane really does better if you focus on using the bombs and rockets because you've got so much that you can put out you're going to have better personal point scores if you're focusing on utilizing this every time you get the chance whereas the f-82b it's kind of supplemental you use the rockets and bombs to try to like if you've gotten 75 percent of the cap done you can use those bombs and rockets to get the additional 25 percent i would actually really quite like to have the f-82e um but I've got the P82, so I'm not spending any money on that. <laughs> right, right. All right, so we've gone from that as your combat use. Um, I don't know why I'm scrolling up when I can just hit the back button. Uh, next is something that is different for North America and for EU. So I'm going to mention North America just very quickly, bounce to EU, and then bounce back to, to NA. On North American server, it's called Independence Day. On EU, it's Battle of Kursk. 
on the Battle of Kursk. Um, you have different missions, same missions that you've got for Independence Day here. So we're going to look at Independence Day. The difference is some of the bonuses and discounts. Actually, all the bonuses and discounts. So let's look at um, the, disc, the missions first that are for Battle of Kursk and Independence Day, and then we'll go back to Independence Day. So Battle of Kursk, you can get these three supply crates when you destroy 50 aerial targets. You get it once per account, and you can you have any number of battles to complete this. It's only for four days, from G July 2nd through July 6th. Um, you can get three supply crates with 60 ground targets, again, once per account, uh, 60 ground target kills. And then you can get one unique supply crate, and this one's a little bit more complicated. You have to win 10 battles while earning at least 5,000 personal points in each battle. Um, personally, that just means to win 10 battles because I can't tell you the last time I got less than 5,000 personal points. But that being said, I know not everybody um, has that uh, benefit. So, but still, it's it's any number of battles. Just do it in the next uh, four days and you'll get a unique supply crate. They tend to have more goodies in them than the regular supply crates. So, hey, go for it, right? On top of that, um, you have the ability to get 50% um, crew experience by being the top three in personal points. This one's repeatable. So that's all really good. This actually ties into, and all that was available on EU, but what's available on North America, you also have the Fighters for Freedom. You earn this awesome emblem, and you get a day of premium account, as long as you earn 40,000 personal points in any number of battles. You get that once per account, uh, because, you know, North America, well, United States independence, uh, but it's the North American server that gets this extra discounts as far as this is concerned. And these discounts, which are incredibly, incredibly, incredibly awesome and incredibly important to take advantage of, especially if you're free to play. All American um, aircraft are on, regular aircraft are on some sort of discount. You get hangar slots using gold, they're going to be 50% off. Barracks, uh, bunks in the barracks using gold are going to be 50% off. So taking a look at this, Nope, wrong button. Tech tree. So literally everything from the P-51D, F-7F, F-4U-4, P-47N, and B-32, all that's going to be 50% off. It really annoys me because I literally just bought my B-32 yesterday. And then this day, discount came through. And um, yeah, whatever. It is what it is. 50% off is huge, though. Again, if you're free to play, you want to take advantage of this. Even if you're not already grinding American lines, take advantage um, there's some really good American planes, as you can see. I've got basically everything that's tier six, tier five, and above, except the bombers, because bombers suck, uh, which is weird that I'm going to be trying to grind for the B-29C. Anywho, different story. I'm not going to get the P-51D. It's okay. Everything else I loved, I've kept, and anything that's tier five and below is good enough for me to to want to keep as well. I'll probably be buying a lot of this this weekend. Anywho, beyond that, the tier eights and above are 30% off, which is huge. That means a tier 10, you know, the F-86A, which in my opinion is the best tier 10 fighter, it's certainly a, the biggest pain in the ass at tier 10, that's for sure. The XF-90, which tends to be the go-to for a lot of uh, meta um, heavy fighter players. Um, F-7U, definitely underrated. F-84F, yeah, it's pretty good. Um, so all of those are basically 2 million credits off. All these tier 9, you're saving 1.5 million credits. All these tier eight, you're saving a million credits on each of those. That adds up so incredibly much. This is a time you want to take advantage of it. If you're on North America, take advantage of the discounts. Um, it's absolutely incredible, and I can't uh, I can't stress that enough. Take advantage of those discounts. Happy Independence Day, everybody. Uh, pff, unless you're on EU, then you know, enjoy your independence some other day. Um, there was a quick patch which just basically makes sure that. The B-29C has its increased um, silver income. It's being been increased by 30%, so holy crap, it's going to be making credits like it already was. Uh, the description of the rear turret for the B-29C is fixed. It had a tw it has a 20 millimeter rear turret. It has a bunch of turrets, but the rear turret is 20 millimeters. It didn't say that in game. Now it does. I didn't realize that you couldn't have a clan emblem on your X-54 Swoosh Goose. Cool, great, now you can do that. And it did fix the extra equipment slot, supposedly, on um, the B-29C. You used to only be able to have like five, uh, four equipment slots, and now it can have five, which is what it should have had. All right, so let's take a, let's, let's look at the meat and potatoes here. So here's the Boeing 
B29C Super Fortress. Look at this. Freaking beautiful. Like I said, I don't even like bombers in the game. I like bombers in real life. In the game, I'm not really good at them. Although, I haven't had a bad game in the B32, so I'd like to think that the B29, uh, B29C will be um, just as good. The B29C, does, it has the same bomb layout as the B32. It has more turrets. It has a crap ton more health. It has better altitude. It's got everything. Since you're having the same bombs, everything else about it's better. Uh, it's not fast. You can look at it. It's clearly it just, the wings are too big to be fast, right? It has no maneuverability, yada, yada, yada. But it's got great altitude performance, and it's, it's like 2,500 hit points or something ridiculous at tier 8. Um, and it just looks, look at it. It just looks so freaking pretty. Anyway, I want it. I'm going to be grinding for it. This is going to be one pain in the butt grind. It is from July 2nd through August 2nd, so you've got a full month. I actually go on vacation August 2nd, so this would be a good way to, like, try to get myself set up. All right. You can, before we get into the, the nitty-gritty details of this, you can um, skip all these missions, a couple of them, one of them, all of them, if you purchase certificates in the... Um, premium shop we'll go over that in a little while um in the meantime we're gonna go over the missions right now and you can see um you know how you could try to earn this completely free it is not an easy grind don't assume it's an easy grind it just isn't an easy grind but it shouldn't be it's tier 8 premium for free especially if you're good at bombers you're gonna love this thing so mission number one. Oh, before i even get into that huh, talking so quick and i apologize even if you don't plan on, I've already mentioned this, even if you don't plan on getting the B-29C, sign up for the missions. Uh, the first mission is a prime example, and you can continue to just, if you happen to get them, you get them, great. If you don't, then you don't, whatever. You get rewards for every single one of these missions. And some of the rewards, most of the rewards are, are good, whether or not you are um, trying to get the, the bomber, the premium bomber or not for right off the bat mission. Number one, earn 60,000 personal points in any number of battles. You get a free day of premium. That's worth it. You're going to get 60,000 personal points. Eventually you might as well get a, a free day of premium at it. You just need to go in here, go to your view list, go to the mission and start it. It's valid through August 2nd. Go for it. Honestly, like if you're, if you're grinding the XP 55, if you're grinding the vampire, stop grinding those. Go for the B29C just to get the free stuff. You can go back to the XP55 and the vampire at a later time. All right? All right. Now that we're past that, that was mission one. Get a free day of premium time. Mission two, you get um, 10 pneumatic control assists. These are the premium ones for period three. But um, to get that uh, reward, you participate in capturing 25 sectors in any number of battles. I'm going to tell you this a lot throughout this review. A lot of these conditions, a lot of these missions, you just want to go out in your, your favorite plane. You, it's going to be a very long grind. You don't want to be forcing yourself to play a plane that you think is the best option or you think is meta. Oh, I'm going to go out in the 1101. If you're not good in the, the MEP 1101, then go in the plane that you are good in, right? I can't stress that enough because this this the mission grind is going to be stressful. Um, and so at least try to have fun while you're doing it and don't force yourself to play planes that you don't like to play. That being said, you know, for participating in capturing 25 sectors, you want to be in a heavy fighter, a, a ground attacker, a bomber, maybe a multi-role. Um, but again, something that you enjoy, 25 sectors is you're not going to get that done in, in one game, obviously. You probably won't get it done in five games. Um, so think of it as probably going to take, you know, seven to 10 to maybe more games. So just keep that in mind. Mission three, you get some parts. Yay. Destroy a hundred defense aircraft in any number of battles. Keep in mind, this is air defense aircraft. You have to get those air defense aircraft. Otherwise the kills don't count a hundred air defense aircraft. It's probably going to take a while, right? 10 games. If you're doing uh, pretty darn well. And again, so just get in a plane that you enjoy killing other airplanes in. You don't want to go out in your your B-32, um, it's going to take you forever in a B-32, right? Go out in a heavy fighter or a fighter or a, uh, a good multi-roll and you can do this mission well. Mission number four, uh, some more parts. Flying Paladin Achievement. Let's take a quick look at what the Flying Paladin Achievement is. Flying Paladin Achievement is something you can earn on a fighter or a heavy fighter. There's different... Um, 
different um, thresholds for each of those. For a heavy fighter, you need 15 kills. Any aerial target kills, so enemy aircraft, air defense aircraft, bomber flight counts towards this. 15 kills in a heavy fighter, 17 kills, excuse me, 17 kills in a regular fighter. So as I've mentioned before, go in something that you're comfortable with, that you can tell yourself I can get 15 or 17 kills. Um, don't f go in something that you just, that you're told is a good thing and um, assume that it's going to be the right thing to do. Um, flying Paladin shouldn't be too difficult for those of us that can get uh, the aerial kills. But and keep in mind, again, it means basic, it's any aerial target, so have at it. Mission number five, you get boosters, and you get a lot of boosters, as, as you'll see here. But this is intensive training boosters, five of them. It's for Conqueror. Conqueror is marked as a relatively difficult uh, mission to try to complete. I have like 1,300 of them. I can't tell you. I couldn't even tell you before I started this video what the heck you had to do to get a Conqueror. It's 450 capture points throughout a battle. So keep in mind a Conqueror can be... Capture points can be earned from defense or attack. People tend to get that confused. Obviously from attacking, you're capturing... You know, you're getting capture points as you're attacking a sector... And as the sector's capture points are captured, you're receiving those capture points until you capture that sector. To get capture points while defending, um, you know, and, and, and you're in the sector defending the sector, an enemy is coming into that sector. They've captured some of it. You see the little, the uh, amount of the, the pie, so to speak, has um, changed to where they've captured some of it. When you kill an enemy aircraft in that sector, you'll notice the pie go, gets bigger. That's you getting capture points back, and you are earning those capture points. So you can get Conqueror by defending a sector completely. In fact, I've done that quite quite often, um, which is probably why I've got uh, so many Conquerors and don't even know how I got them. So 450 capture points. Doesn't need to be in a sortie. Uh, I don't think. I don't remember. I don't believe so. Um, but it's just in the battle. Uh, next up, mission number six. Uh, this was just going to be... You know, it's going to kind of be a little tedious. It's not overly tedious. There's one that's, that's even more tedious. Um, but you get 10 emergency engine restart. 2,000 capture points in any number of battles. Again, you can earn capture by attacking or defending. A pretty solid game is going to be you know 500 capture points. But I mean, I've had quite a few games that are like 360 capture points and things of that nature. So this can just be a tedious one if you don't get a lot of capture points for whatever reason in a battle. But it is what it is. It's any number of battles, so yay. Uh, mission number seven, receive an expert pilot achievement, and you get a standard supply crate. What in the world is an expert pilot? I don't know. I, I couldn't tell you off the top of my head. Let's take a look. I should have looked at this one ahead of time. Achievements. Expert pilot, expert pilot, where are you? Um, this one right here. Expert pilot awarded for achieving one of the top three ranks in the combat crew for two victorious battles in a row. The count is reset. So apparently I've done this for 26 battles in a row. Um, and I'm currently on a series of 16 in a row. So yeah, so you just need to be top three, two, two victorious battles in a row. All right, seems easy enough. Moving along, you get a standard supply crate. You're not gonna get anything special out of the standard supply crate, but I mean, you get something. Mission number eight, you get some more parts. Destroy 75 enemy aircraft while defending sectors in any number of battles. This one's going to take a while. It's just going to be tedious. Um, best bet is to be in a fighter. Best bet is to either put yourself in a sector that you know everybody's going to be coming to, like the cent those centrally located military bases or centrally located commands. Actually, like honestly, centrally located anything. It could probably be a centrally located garrison. To, for whatever reason, the bots always go there because it's centrally located. Whatever. Um, avoid going to like mining facilities and stupid stuff like that because there's just not... The things you're going to be defending, quote unquote, against are going to be like ground attackers and bombers. Um, unless you're in a heavy fighter, you're not going to do as well defending against those items. And if you're in a heavy fighter, you shouldn't really be defending too much anyway. Um, another thing that you could do besides just doing that is also go some of the maps might have a sector that's right near their spawn the enemy spawn point go to that sector and defend the crap out of that um, I've gotten like aces in like a FW 190d just because I happen to be near the at the sector that they spawned next to and the people just kept coming in and I just kept killing them um, 
so you know you can get a lot of uh, enemy aircraft killed while defending sectors remember it's enemy aircraft so no air defense aircraft no bomber runs none of that shenanigans it's got to be enemy aircraft mission number nine you get some radio electronics yay some more parts destroy 30 armored sectors of ground sections of ground targets in a single battle not overly difficult i find it easier in a ground attacker um, but some of you that are really good at bombers can just you know drop bombs everywhere and you'll get those 30 armored sections i'm quite sure there's people out there that can do this in in multi-rolls maybe even some heavy fighters i'm going to be doing this in a ground attacker i didn't recall this being overly difficult on the xp 54 missions can't imagine it being very difficult at this point mission number 10 so we're 33 percent of the way through thunderer um, you can earn five air reconnaissance boosters Thunder is awarded for earning at least 400 capture points for destroying enemy ground targets in a battle. Seems pretty straightforward. You don't need to win. It's not a sorty thing. 400 capture points for destroying the enemy ground targets. Um, yeah, straightforward. Either you're going to do it or it's going to be a pain in the butt. It shouldn't be too big of a pain in the butt. Again, I'm going to do ground attackers. But, but anything that's just destroying ground targets more often than not is going to be your best bet. So bombers, obviously, are going to be a really good option there, too. Mission number 11, destroy 75 aerial targets in any number of battles. And you get some special ammunition that I will totally sell. So the special, uh, the, the 75 aerial targets, again, that can be anything. So air defense, aircraft, bomber runs, or just enemy aircraft. Um, this could, it's any number of battles. Obviously, if anybody ever did 75 in one battle, kudos to them. Don't get frustrated with this. Go out in a in a plane that you enjoy and just go out there and start killing some stuff. It's going to take, you know, whether it takes 10 battles or it takes, you know, five battles, whatever it does, it is what it is. And you kind of just move on and continue. Mission number 12, 30 tokens, which is pretty nice. Earn a Rocketeer. Remember, Rocketeer is any rocket that kills it. Well, let me, let me rephrase this. Almost any rocket that kills an enemy aircraft. There are some rockets on the F-84s, the Tiny Tim rockets, that count as bombardiers, believe it or not. But that's because you have the smaller air-to-ground rockets on that plane, so the Tiny Tims count as bombs. Don't ask me why, it is what it is. If all you've got is Tiny Tims, like on the XF-5U, that is a Rocketeer. Good luck trying to hit somebody with a Tiny Tim, though. Any other air-to-air... Kill with a rocket, so any of your normal air-to-air -air rocket uh, planes, like a BVP-210 or a 262, um, F-89, F-94D, those are all air-to-air -air rockets. But then again, anybody that has air-to-ground rockets, if you've hit anybody with those and you've killed them, you've earned the Rocketeer, you win. Continue on with your day, um, and thank you very much. Mission number 13, earn a supply crate. Destroy 120 ground targets in any number of battles. Ground attacker and a bomber again is going to be your best bet. Um, you're going to notice that a lot. We're obviously going for a, a bomber, a premium bomber, so a lot of the missions are going to be geared around bombers. It is what it is. Mission number 14, you get an advanced turret gun laying drive. You're going to be able to slap that on your B-29 once you get it. Destroy seven enemy aircraft while attacking sectors in a single battle. Keep in mind, it's enemy aircraft, so attacking the air defense aircraft does not count towards this mission um, it needs to be enemy aircraft so you need to be this is a mission you need to pay attention to the map and say okay where are the enemy aircraft where do I need to go to kill them and um, how do we get this taken care of focus on something honestly you probably want to be in something relatively quick because you want to get from sector to sector and attacking that sector remember it's not defending so attacking that sector so you want to be in something quick typically a heavy fighter there certainly are some multi-rolls and, and a, a fair amount of fighters that could do this mission as well. But quick is, is key for this particular um, mission for sure. Mission number 15. Um, look, some more boosters. Upgrade implementation. Flying Exterminator. What is the Flying Exterminator? Uh, that is going to be an attack, attack aircraft and bomber mission. So for the attack aircraft... It's ca um, 400 capture points for destroying ground targets. For the bomber, it is 550 capture points um, earned, received, while destroying ground targets. So it's actually a little bit harder as far as capture points are concerned to do in a bomber. But then again, if you're much better in a bomber than a ground attack plane, then, then take out the bomber. That's what the Flying Exterminator badge is. 
that's what you need to do to earn it. So that's how you'd complete mission number 15. Mission number 16, destroy 120 sections of ground targets in any number of battles. Uh, you get one day of premium account. 120 sections of ground targets, it's any number of battles, so you just kind of do what you got to do. And you roll on, you're going to want to be in something, you know, bomber or ground attacker. Um, this is going to be your best bet. Something that's seriously just focused on sections of ground targets is going to be your best bet to get that completed quickly. Mission number 17, you get some heavy warheads, yay, for dropping bombs. 5,000 capture points for destroying ground targets in any number of battles. This one's just going to be tedious. Um, yeah, it's just going to be tedious. It is what it is. If you're just for destroying ground targets, you really don't want to be in a multi-roll for this mission because multi-roll is going to get distracted by too many things up in the air. Just use your ground attackers, use your bombers. Something that you're okay playing lots and lots of games in. Um, and continue along. Mission number 18. Destroy 75 enemy multi-role fighters. In any number of battles, you're going to get some medical kits, which I'll sell. Um, this one's just super tedious. Because everybody's going to be going out there trying to kill those multi-role fighters. And so, be under the assumption you're going to get the you know, 5 multi-role kills per battle. Well, how many freaking battles is that? That's 15 godforsaken battles. So take your time. You might only get 2 this battle. You might get 7 next. You might get three. Like, don't stress out about it. Go out there in something that you feel comfortable killing multi-rolls. Most fighters are pretty good at killing multi-rolls. Probably don't want to be in a multi-roll um, because everybody's going to be gunning for you, possibly if they're all on mission number 18. But again, find something you enjoy playing that you know you can go out there and get some multi-roll kills. Savvy? Savvy. Mission number 19. Uh, you get the ability to get some procurement system boosters. Flying Guardian Badge. Well, what is the Flying Guardian Badge? Flying Guardian is... going to be a multi-roll and a fighter mission. Flying Guardian Badge for multi-rolls. Um, destroy eight enemy aircraft while defending. And it's actually eight for a fighter as well. For me, I'd want to just be in a fighter. Because, I mean, it's just better at defending a sector. Multi-roll can do a little bit of everything, but... Being specialized to defend sectors is going to make this easier for you, I would think. Get eight while defending a sector in a multi-role or a fighter, so at least you've got that flexibility, I suppose. And you'll get yourself a Flying Guardian achievement. Lang. Lang is just one of those that not, not a lot of Langs are floating around there, right? Um, I've only got 14. There are certainly some pilots out there that have a bunch of them. Then again, I, I only started um, really flying ground attack um, aircraft recently-ish. But there's definitely a lot of some pilots out there that are very good at this mission. What is it, Postal? Stop freaking stalling. A Lang medal is awarded for destroying at least 15 enemy ground targets. Sounds pretty easy. In a single sortie. All right. It's a little bit more difficult. Um, and winning the battle. Well, there you just you know cut out. Even if you're a good pilot, you just cut out you know a, a third of your battles. Um. So 15 ground targets in a single sortie winning the battle, you will get a lane. So basically, if it's in a single sortie, my mentality is don't ever die. So you want to be in a plane where you don't die that can get 15 enemy ground targets knocked out. This could conceivably... I've done it in ground attackers. I know it can be done in bombers. It can certainly be done in multi-rolls. Um, I can't imagine very many heavy fighters doing it. I guess the P-82 would be one of them. Um... But that's it. It's ground focus. Don't die. You will get yourself your B-29 gunner. Yay. With five points. Yay. Uh, all right. Mission number 21. Earn another day of premium. Destroy 50 enemy aircraft in any number of battles. Again, not air defense aircraft, not bombing runs, enemy aircraft. So be it. Takes five battles, ten battles. Who knows however long it'll take for your skill set. Mission number, so again, go out in a plane, just go out in planes that you enjoy playing. You're not going to get 50 enemy aircraft down in one battle or two battles. Go out there and just play in a plane that you know you can get a lot of kills in and move along. Mission number 22, you get some equipment that I'm sure you're going to use for your bomber. Play five battles and score at least 10,000 personal points in each of them. I like this because it's not win, um, you know, a win requirement or a sortie requirement. I'd be hard pressed to. I mean, this will take me six battles, and that's if I'm if I'm unlucky. 
I know that there's going to be people out there that it might take, you know, 10 battles just because some some battles you're going to get 8,000 and you're just like, what the heck? Or you just get trolled and, and stomped by the enemy team and you're only getting 5,000. So be it. But again, this is just a... a it's not like you need five in a row or anything like that. So just go out there in a plane that you know you can get the personal points in. Don't worry if you're winning. Go out there and get the personal points. Get five battles and move along. And have fun. Like, don't stress the frig out about it. It's not worth it. Mission 23. Get some fire extinguishers that, again, I'll sell. Destroy eight enemy aircraft while defending sectors in a single battle. This could be, if you're not a fighter pilot, this could be a pain in the butt mission. I know that. To me, it's not going to be. I'm going to go out in the Yak-15. I'm going to go out in, in a Ki-84. I'm going to go out in something that just sits in a sector and kills everything that comes to it. Yak-19. Um, you know, those kind of planes. And I'm just... That's all they do, and they do it really well. And I'm going to destroy it in the enemy aircraft. I remember on the XP-54, it took me one battle. I understand, though, there's some some pilots out there that has, that is not their cup of tea. You need to, you need to play in a plane... That you're again, you're comfortable in, that you're good at defending sectors in. It might be the P-51A. It might be a BF-109F. Hey, kudos to you. Go out in the plane that you know you can get those eight enemy aircraft. Remember, it's just enemy aircraft. It's not bombers, uh, you know, bombing runs. It's just the enemy aircraft. So focus on that. Mission number twenty-four. You get two supply crates. Flying revenge achievement. What the heck is the flying revenge? Uh, flying revenge achievement. Uh, that's destruction of infrastructure. So, um, for this is under bombers, you would need to destroy 150 um, sections of ground target. For a ground attacker, you need to destroy 100. It's a decent amount, I'm not going to lie. Um, but it can be done, right? If you're good at ground attackers and good at bombers, I assume you're kind of good at bombers if you're going down this mission. Flying Revenge, you probably have a handful of them already. Just focus on getting the, um, getting those ground kills. Ground kills, ground kills, ground kills. Try to stay alive and continue to do that. Um, I've, I think I've only got like 14 of those right now. Right, Flying Revenge, where are you at? 18. So not a whole lot. Um, what I really don't have a whole lot of is the next one, which is a Doolittle. What is the freaking Doolittle? Oh, the Doolittle is going to be one that's going to take me a while. I know it. Doolittle is a bomber-only mission. You get your B-29 pilot when you complete this mission number 25, but you have to earn the Doolittle. What is it? Stop stalling again. Doolittle is awarded for earning at least 400 capture points for destroying enemy ground targets with a bomber in a single sortie. I super struggle with staying alive in bombers. I just do. So this Doolittle is going to be a huge pain in my butt. Uh, but I also know that there's people out there that get Doolittles every freaking day, so kudos to them. But that's how you get a Doolittle, 400 capture points in your bomber in a single sortie. I don't even think you need a win. You just need to not die. Mission number 26, get another day of premium time. 750,000 hit points of damage to ground targets in any number of battles. So... Obviously, the higher tier you are, the more damage you, more damage potential you have. So, you know, IL-40Ps, ME-1102Bs, SU-10s, EF-131s, EF those are going to be the cream of the crop for this. You can get this mission done, not quickly, but quicker in those particular missions, in those particular planes, excuse me. If you're stuck at lower tiers, it's going to take you forever. It's going to be nigh impossible, to be honest. Not that you need to be at tier 10. Don't get me wrong. You can do this tier 7 and above, basically. It's just going to take you longer. Um, and that's in ground attackers and bombers. If you've only got heavy fighters, this is going to take you a really long time. All the heavy fighters in the game, none of them are like over the top for ground damage, except for maybe like the, the P-1056, uh, the aforementioned B-82B. Planes like that that have, have an extensive amount of air-to-ground damage ability. But keep in mind, those don't reload their bombs and rockets nearly as quickly as ground attack and bomber vehicles do. So uh, there's a lot of multi-rolls out there that could probably do pretty well in this. Um, but again, your best bet, in my opinion, is going to be bombers and ground attackers and, and just go from there. 
Mission number 27, earn 5,000 personal points from destroying ground targets in a single battle. I can't imagine this one being overly difficult. If you're, if you're already this far into the missions, you've probably gotten yourself pretty darn good at ground attackers and bombers. Uh, but you can do this in a multi-role and even some heavy fighters. It can, it's, it can be done. It doesn't need to be a one battle. It doesn't need to be a sortie. It's just a, a single battle, 5,000 personal points. And you get some reinforced skin, advanced reinforced skin. Ooh la la. Mission number 28. This one was a mission I thought was going to be very difficult on the XP-54, and it ended up being a one-game mission. Um, you earn 10 secondary control systems, so that's great. Um, destroy three aerial targets with a gunner in a single battle. So you want to be in a plane, again, that you're just comfortable with that has a rear gunner. Uh, not even a rear gunner, just any kind of gunner. Um, I did this in the IL-40 or IL-40P or IL-20. I don't even really remember. I think it was IL-40, to be honest. Um, the key is just you got to focus on getting those those rear gunner targets. I'm typically so focused on getting the ground damage that I'm really not paying a whole lot of attention to the planes that are around me as far as like hit points is concerned. I pay attention to you know, angles people are coming at if they're attacking me, yada, yada, yada. But for this mission, um, I was focused on if there was an aircraft near me that was on pretty low health, I would actually disregard the ground targets, angle my plane so that I could get my rear gunner on target and take that plane out. I got this, you know, three aerial targets killed in, in the first, like, three minutes of a battle, four minutes of a battle, and not even a third of the way, right? And then focused on the uh, the rest of the game. Uh, it was a pretty darn good game. Mission number 29, you get three supply crates. So, again, we've gotten a lot of supply crates here, right? One, two, three, five, um, six supply crates and uh, standard crates. So... Between that and some of the other missions going on, you can get a lot of supply crates, which is just another reinforcement of not spending money on the um, supply crates in the shop. Except for steel crates. If you're looking for steel crates, that's the only way you can get them. Anyway, here are the sky achievements. Um, you know, so that's getting your five chevrons on whatever plane. The like, thing I like about this is if you find, you're like, finally, I can play a freaking multi roll or a heavy or a fighter or this other plane that I haven't been able to play for a while because I've having to play these bombers and stuff. Go hop in that and get yourself Hero of the Sky. Get those chevrons. Once you get your fifth chevron, you got Hero of the Sky, grade one, and um, you're good to go. Typically, if I'm in a rush, I'm just going to hop in like an A7M. This is me. This is not you. Everybody's different, right? Go hop in an A7M, defend the crap out of a sector, um, get an ace and a hero of the sky at the same time and be done with my life and move along. Um, but that being said, hero of the sky can be earned with anything. Hero of the skies can, uh, are kind of easy to earn for ground attackers uh, in my hands. So maybe I'll just continue with a ground attacker, right? Um, there's some really good multi-rolls and heavies. Out. Like, I love that, it, that, yeah, it's hero of the sky. It's not easy achievement, but it's not. at least there's some flexibility on it. And yeah, last but certainly not least, one of the more difficult medals in the game to earn, in my opinion. Um, well, one of the more difficult ones to force, I should say, is the Marseille. I've actually got less Marseilles than aces, um, if I remember correctly, if that's still true. Yep, 136 Marseilles, and where the heck are the aces? Puppy's distracting me. Um, here are 204 aces. Um, yeah, the Marseille is just such a fickle, fickle... Um, it just, it's just a fickle metal to get. So to get a Marseille, it's a, it is a sortie-driven metal. Um, 17 aerial targets in a single sortie and win the battle. Ugh, that's what kills it. If you didn't have to win the battle, I could have had a lot more Marseilles. But basically, you... 17 is such a large amount of aerial kills um, that you really you can't die. I know I've gotten two Marseilles after I've died. Um, I died early on, got like two kills in one and three kills in another, and then came back and just, you know, guns blazing, no pun intended, kicking butt and taking names, and actually got a Marseille, got aces in them. Um, but that's, you couldn't die for the rest of the battle. So the Marseille is one of those fickle ones because if you're playing too good... If everything doesn't line up, you're never going to get to 17 kills anyway because you just stomped them too much. If you're getting, you know, stomped by the enemy team, even if you go out there and get 25 kills, doesn't matter because you didn't win. So the Marseille is going to be one of those that's going to drive people crazy. 
Um, I'm hoping to get the rest of my missions done early enough that I can sit back and, you know, take my time and get a Marseille. That being said, I've had to get Marseilles for previous missions, and it took me a really, really long time. For the XP-54, though, I think it took me three battles. I went out in the... Um, I didn't take my own advice. I was trying to go out in something that I knew could get the Marseille, and then I was like, nope, let's just go out in something that I... That, yes, I know can get the Marseille, but I'm going to have fun in. I went out in the F-86A and got it, uh, in the, in that, and that was the third battle that I was even trying. So, um... I'm going to I'm going to reiterate this. It's important cuz you don't want to burn yourself out on these missions. Play planes that are going to be fun because otherwise you're going to drive yourself crazy and you're going to you're either going to get to, you know, mission 24 and just wear yourself out. I don't remember. Sure, 24, 25, you're just going to drive yourself crazy. I'm going to drive myself crazy on Doolittle. I need to find a bomber that I actually enjoy. Um but that being said, if you're not enjoying it, you're going to actually do worse on the missions. If you're having, if you're struggling, if you're being annoyed by somebody, if you log into a battle and you say, God dang it, there's a Yak-19 on the enemy team. How the hell am I supposed to get a Marseille now? Who cares? Then don't get a Marseille now. Like, do not let that kind of crap get to you, okay? It's just not worth it. Your mental health is not worth the freaking premium. That being said, there are some wiggles. If, you, if you're willing to spend money... There's the, the ability to wiggle on this. So there are certificates for the, the uh, B-29C. So personally, if I think I'm going to spend money on a freaking premium, I, I, I do it in a very exacting manner. And I'll explain that in just a minute, but we're just going to look at the, the big money spent on here. So if you want to spend and get all 270 certificates and buy the plane outright, it's 70 bucks. That's $20 more expensive than a standard tier 8 premium. Tw uh, 15 to 20 more dollars. But that being said, you get 3,500 gold, you get seven days of premium, you get three supply crates, which I mean, there's a reasonable chance that you're going to get a, a, a cheap ass premium out of these crates. No guarantee, of course. But um, yeah, so yeah, it's $70, but I think it kind of balances itself out between being tier eight and the other shenanigans. That's my own personal opinion. If you're spending money, I don't really encourage anybody to spend too much money on this game. Um, you could... You could do 200 certificates or 150 or 100 or 15. It's kind of weird that there's such a huge jump in between here. And I'll, I'll give you my reasons why I think there's such a huge jump in just a second. And then I don't know why you'd only spend five, but okay, there's five. So the thing with the, um, the certificates is you can actually go in here ahead of time and like just you can see how many each of the, these items are and what their certificate cost is. So you could conceivably, if you're telling yourself, I'm going to get the B29C no matter what, I'm going to spend some sort of money on it, but I don't want to spend 70 freaking dollars on it. You can go in here and take a look and say, okay, what is going to be a struggle for me? What's going to drive me freaking crazy? And, um, w you know, where am I going to go completely crazy at? So none of these are going to drive me crazy, right? So I think I can get through all these. I don't know why the Conqueror would be 18, but maybe it's just me. Maybe it's one that I'm good at, but nobody else is. I have no idea. I highly doubt that. Uh, but you can see, and you can go, okay... Uh, thunder, I can do a thunderer. So this is me talking. I know I can do a thunderer. I'm not spending tokens on the thunderer. Certificates, excuse me. All right, so we're going to keep going on here. Um, destroy seven enemy aircraft when attacking sectors. I'm, I can do that. Getting a flying exterminator badge, that might be difficult. That might be really difficult. So let's just say 20, 20 certificates. Um, flying guardian badge, I'm not worried about that one at all. Um, a laying metal, that one could be really difficult. So there's another 20. So there's 40 certificates that I'm, I could, pr it wouldn't hurt me to have 40 certificates, right? Flying revenge badge and a do little. So that's 60, that's 72. I'm, I'm being very, um, look, I'm assuming I can get these other than the do little. I'm hoping I can get it. I'm not assuming I can get it. Everything in this, this mission, I'm assuming I can get, but the do little. But we're at 72 now, right? Um, and last but not least, there's your Marseille. That one's gonna be really difficult. That's putting us up to 98. Huh. So for postal, I could spend, you know, the $20, $21, whatever it might be, um, and get 96 certificates. Let's scroll here. 100 certificates, $27, and grind out the rest of them. 
to get the B29C. So is a tier eight premium worth $27.13? Again, that's still, you know, that's still up to you. It might be. Um, but I could also say, you know, I'm almost positive I could get the Flying Extin Exterminator. I can get, you know, some of those other ones. The only ones I'm really uh, worried about, to be honest, are gonna be like the Doolittle, the Marseille, um, and maybe the Lang, which that adds up to about 66. You'll notice there's not a lot in between 15, there's nothing between 15 and 100. And I kind of think that's because I think a lot of people that I'm speaking to right now are going to be kind of like me, where there's probably about 75 certificates worth of items that people can't just can't complete or, or won't have the time to complete. And yet there's nothing in between there. And to be honest, if you want to buy 75 certificates, if you bought, you know, five of these, um, that would five times, you know, that would put you up above 30. So you'd only get about $30, a little less than. But you think you get 75 certificates. You could spend 27 and get 100. So I think Wargaming is really trying to encourage people to get 100 certificates. That's why there's that threshold right there. Um, and such a big jump. But that's just, that's my thought process. So conceivably, I could spend $27 and, and definitely, definitely get this plane. No worries about getting a Lang or a Doolittle. Or, um, you know, Doolittle's the only one that I'm really, really not looking forward to. If you're gonna spend money on this thing anyway, that would be my suggestion to save dollars, is go in here and say, well, shoot, I can get 60,000 personal points in any number of battles. Of course, I've got three available certificates, so that's funny. Um, yeah, so that would be my, my suggestion when it comes to if you're gonna spend money Nobody needs this bomber today. I mean, to be honest, the only people that quote unquote would need it would be content creators. And that way they can put out a video on, you know, what, you know, is this freaking thing even worth the stupid grind? Um, it kind of seems like it is, especially if you're a bomber player. So yeah, that is, you know, that is the missions that are coming up here. Um, some pretty heavy duty ones. Nobody's going to have this plane by the end of the day. Not this plane, this is B-32. Nobody's going to have a B-29 by the end of the day. It's just not going to happen. There's too many missions, too many games, even for good players, where some of those missions are going to take at least five games just because it's cumulative. Even if you got a Lang first go, and you got a Flying Exterminator first go, and you got a Doolittle first go, you're still, with all those cumulative, you know, 750 ground damage games and stuff like that, 750,000 ground damage even if you got all the other medals combined together in their single game format, you're still going to be, you know, 50, 50 freaking flights in. And that's if you get everything as early as you possibly can, basically. So I've mentioned it before. I'm going to just say it one more time. Take your time. Just, just play the game. Play the game focused on, you know, getting that, that whatever mission you're working on, of course. Change some of it. To, to do better in that mission, especially if it's a one game mission that you need to complete in one game. But if it's a cumulative in X, you know, in, in however many battles, then sit back and, and just play the game, do your normal grind and all that stuff, and, and it will eventually come to you. Anyway, I hope this was helpful. Uh, as a long video, I appreciate you guys uh, hanging out with me. And um, I will see you out on the battlefield as we try to get ourselves some more uh, some more tier eight premiums, right? I like that that uh, World of Warplanes does this. I was able to get a BVP two hundred three and the Horton uh, HO two two nine. I think there's some other tier eight premium. I know I've gotten some other tiers premiums as well for free. Yeah. So if if you can take advantage and get a a free plane, especially a premium plane. Especially a tier eight premium plane, do it. I've gotten so many credits from my BVP 203 and my Horton 229, and any of my tier eight premiums. That um, if you, especially if you're good at bombers, but even if you're not, you're still gonna get credits from from a tier eight premium. So have at it. I highly encourage everybody. Otherwise, if you're on the NA server, take advantage of the um, the American line uh, discounts that are going on. They're all across the board for the four-day weekend. Otherwise, everybody have a wonderful uh, July 4th American Independence Day. 
And I will see you out on the battlefield. I am streaming Saturday night into Sunday morning. And uh, hopefully we'll see you there. Bye.